gentlemen, sorry that I'm barely getting to this, but I had lost my voice, and I have to recover from that, but anyway, oh goodness, so this was a filler pay-per-view, pretty much, stopping grounds, yeah, so we're supposed to accept this new name, this new quote-unquote pay-per-view, and we're supposed to accept, well, some of these results, well, these are the results, and perhaps some rants or two or forever for WWE Stomping Grounds 2019. So Tony Nese loses the Cruiserweight Championship without losing the Cruiserweight Championship. Triple Threat rules he wasn't pinned, Akira Tozawa was pinned by Drew Gulak, so Drew Gulak is a Cruiserweight Champion. Hmm. At least they didn't have it one-on-one -on -one versus Tony Nese and have him be fodder or anything like that. Of course, Akira Tozawa was fodder here. There was no there was no other way around that if Drew Gulak was going to get the title or if Akira Tozawa was going to get the title. They weren't going to pin Tony Nese. They weren't going to have anything to do with Tony Nese at that point. But, yeah, Drew Gulak, Cruiserweight Champion. Honestly, ladies and gentlemen, does anyone give a damn about the Cruiserweight? This, does anyone give a damn about this division? Please, I would like to know. So this happened at the opening of the show. Raw Women's Championship match. Lacey Evans, the mom, Becky Lynch. I didn't think that the mom was going to lose. I didn't think that Lacey Evans was going to be women's champion. It, it, not anytime soon. I didn't think that shit was going to happen. But she got disarmed, which was put on more than once in the match. And the last time that it was on, she just basically tapped in seconds. So, Raw Women's Champion is Becky Lynch, and I'm like, okay, bravo WWE, do not, do not have Becky Lynch lose this belt, not this soon. Okay, I'm kind of surprised at the result, but then again, uh, the way the match went, attacking Xavier Woods, basically taking Big E out of the equation and Xavier just going through punishment after punishment after punishment taking all hope away from the New Day winning this match Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn did the brilliant thing they did but as far as winning this match does it really mean anything not really I just thought that Xavier Woods and Big E would not lose because Big E was basically returning to the ring from being out for quite some time. First pay-per-view back, I was like, will they actually have the New Day lose here? But they did. But I guess they have to have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn do something because they've barely been doing anything except for just walking around bitching and complaining and getting a couple of title shots and getting a couple of championship matches or just matches against Kofi Kingston and not really going anywhere with that. They can't break that glass ceiling. But anyway, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn win. Even though I got this wrong, I'm still like, eh. So this one surprised me. I didn't think that Samoa Joe was going to cough up the United States Championship to ricochet of all people. It's funny how Ricochet and Aleister Black both basically premiered on the same lines. And then you have Ricochet up here and Aleister Black not even on the fucking roster wrestling. But anyway, that aside, Ricochet as United States Champion. Um, yeah, I'm not really impressed by that. Not, uh, I'm just like, the match was okay. It was just basically Ricochet showing off once again because 
That's all he. That, that's all he's there for. I'm not saying that Ricochet is not talented. I'm just saying that he just is there to show off. That that's just it. I mean, but him as United States Champion. Where are they gonna go? Are they gonna have him cough it up immediately, or are they gonna have him run with it for a while? That's the basic question that I have. I mean, because this video is late going up, we already know where Samoa Joe is going. So, I even said that. I was like, okay, if Samoa Joe loses, where else can he go except challenge for the WWE Championship? And that's exactly what's going to happen. But anyway, Ricochet United States Champion. And once again, I'm like, eh. I didn't think that this was the time for heavy machinery, nor did I think that Daniel Bryan's consolation prize was going to end. Of course, Rowan has been his partner and so on and so forth, and Rowan is kind of, yeah, yeah, Rowan as his partner? But anyway, Rowan and Daniel Bryan retained. Heavy machinery was game. Yeah, they, they, were, they showed up, and it was an actual match to watch to see the interesting things that played out. Especially Daniel Bryan kicking the hell out of Otis and Otis taking all those kicks and getting more pissed than pissed. I mean, it wasn't a bad tag team match, but at the end of the day, I just didn't think that it was Heavy Machinery's time. Not while this consolation prize for Daniel Bryan is still going on. So again, Daniel Bryan and Rowan still SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And again, eh. You couldn't have Bailey beat Alexa Bliss absolutely clean here. You had to have a little distraction from Nikki Cross to cause Bailey to get the upper hand against Alexa Bliss. That's the only part here that really pissed me off. Now, again, I said that maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe the fucking Nikki Cross was going to cost Alexa Bliss the championship as far as winning it. Call it that. But it still pisses me off that you don't believe in Bailey so much that she can't win a one-on-one -on -one match ever without any sort of interference or whatever against Alexa Bliss. I I don't know really what to say after that. It's just that one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, I, I would have really liked to see them one-on-one -on -one with no interference at all. But then again, Nikki Cross was out there for a quote unquote moral support. Um, Bailey uh, uh, freaking kicked Nikki Cross. So Nikki Cross let her emotions get to her and got pissed and got on the apron and tried to get in the ring and distracted the referee. And Bailey just basically took advantage of that. So again, I'm just like, eh. Out of all the results, this one kind of pissed me off. Because I was like, wait a minute. You're going to have Shane O'Mac beat Roman Reigns. Regardless of the situation of Claymore kick taking place, whatever. But, you're, but then you're going to have Drew McIntyre lose against Roman Reigns at this event. I thought they were going to keep it going as far as saying, okay, Roman Reigns has got mountains to climb here and he's bumping in the roadblocks. But no. They basically had Roman Reigns bounce right back against Drew McIntyre, and Drew McIntyre should be heading his way up, not down. So that's why I was like, seriously? You're going to have Roman Reigns lose to Shane O'Mac and then bounce back against Drew McIntyre of all people. Oh, well. I, 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 I was just like, come on, man. You could have actually had even the disqualification here but not a not a fucking pinfall not no i just don't accept that but anyway roman reigns wins so where so what's the point 
What the fuck was the point? And due to what happened this week, I'm just like, seriously, you're really going to go in that direction and I'll handle that on my Raw and SmackDown review report. Listen, you talk about doing anything to keep a championship. Kofi Kingston did just that in the steel cage match. Well, the end of it. The match was okay. No interference. No one came out. No Sami Zayn. No Kevin Owens. No Xavier Woods. No Big E. Just Dolph and Kofi. Dolph Ziggler trying to get out of the cage. Now, you knew, that, come on, they didn't choreograph this good enough because you saw Dolph looking behind him or whatever and Kofi Kingston with door open and ropes. You can't take my championship title! And dives through the freaking ropes. And basically, no, he didn't roll or anything like that. He just basically lands on the fucking floor. Like, fuck you, you're not taking my belt. I waited so long to get here. That made a statement right there. So, again... When, if anyone said, oh, you had to do that in order to fucking win. Escaping the cage is one of the fucking rules. Don't be an idiot. Don't, don't go, fucking be an idiot. What? Would it have been better if you just would have climbed the cage and was just sort of dove off? Come on. Again, don't be an idiot. It was pinfall, submission, or escaping the cage. And one of those three things were done in order to win or retain the WWE Championship. Congratulations to Kofi Kingston. For doing it in this fashion, because it's pretty much going to be a rememberable fashion for a while. Motherfucker d d dove through the ropes <laughs> with door open in order to get out of this ring in order to keep his championship. You rarely see anything like that. So, kudos to WWE for that. And I just didn't think that Dolph Ziggler was going to get the WWE Championship anyway. They still need to let this Kofi Kingston thing ride because he's still red hot. At least, at least what I predicted didn't fucking come true as far as Brock Lesnar being a special guest referee because I would have been like, what the fuck is that? I would have, that shit would have been so stupid and silly, I would have just laughed at it. But, this was kind of not in that league, but you knew what was coming as soon as Baron Corbin made the announcement of who the referee was going to be. Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans, I was like, fuck, do I really want to fucking watch this match? There's going to be slow counts. There's going to be Seth Rollins arguing with her and all that. He can't do anything. Oh, my God. The match is going to change when Seth has the advantage. Or when Baron Corbin wants a certain advantage, the match is going to change again to probably his favor. The only reason why she was chosen, Lacey Evans was chosen, because... Of the Becky Lynch situation and we know in real life Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch are dating so you get just that one two what comes after two again you know shit like that hurting arms counting slow changing matches no count outs when Baron Corbin was being counted out no DQ when Baron Corbin obviously should have been disqualified you even had Lacey hit Seth in the ding ding. And then Becky Lynch can't tell you, oh no, oh no, that's the man's ding ding. And she came out and she basically tackles and attacks Lacey Evans. And then, what do you know? Lacey Evans out of the picture, other referees are there. And it was the same referee from, <laughs> from which Baron Corbin got pissed. Same referee from Super Showdown. And stomp later. One, two, three. Baron Corbin didn't kick out. So Baron Corbin shouldn't have any fucking gripes as far as anything that she wait again. So Seth Rollins retains. The man retains thanks to the mom. And that's this fucking pay per view. I, I, I was like, all right. Honestly, during this pay per view, I was just like, uh. 
probably what made me sick and made me lose my fucking voice. But I was just like, uh, come on. Something interesting happened. Please, please, please. Oh, Kofi jumped out of the cage. Okay, that was pretty interesting. All right, all right. Yeah, all right. Come on. You know. But anyway, that was stomping grounds. Those are the results of it. And I'm just like, ah, damn it. There were not really many interesting things that kept me gripped into the pay-per-view. It, it, there just wasn't. But do you think my opinions are full of shit? Do you agree or disagree with what I'm saying? Please comment below if you're on YouTube. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. <sighs> WWE, man. Just stop making up names for new pay-per-views, quote-unquote, and just, just stick with your normal scheduling. Stop trying to shoehorn shit in and stop trying to shoehorn catchphrases for pay-per-views. It's time to tick tasks and tick names. Come on now. That's nothing new. You just put that shit in there for this pay-per-view called Stomping Grounds and we're just like, seriously, WWE, you couldn't do anything more? But that's WWE creative for you. Dropkick Spice Sands throw motherfuckers over the top rope, both feet hitting the floor. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. This is the theme and the theme is go credits.